In this video, we're going to show you how you can replace your driver's side mirror on a 2005 Chevy 1500. This is a power mirror, and the process is the same for a manual mirror with one additional step. To begin the removal process, you want to make sure that you have a couple tools. We're going to start with this little plastic guy right here because we're gonna go ahead and start moving some trim pieces. So normally you can just grab this guy here and pull it out with your fingers. But if you need to, you can get a little plastic trim piece in here and help pop it out. You can see that it's just held in with these clips, which go into the associated portion here. Once we get that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and try to remove these little clip covers here. Again, using our little plastic tool because we don't want to damage anything. This is just a little style tree connector. We'll put that down and there's another one over here. And this should be covering up a small little uh, bolt. Let's see here. Alrighty, so this is actually covering up our little star bit right here, which we'll show you how to remove in just a few. So once you get that out of the way, you'll also have to remove this guy right here. So we'll get our little plastic trim piece in here, get this out of the way. You're gonna have another screw back there. There's gonna be a screw in here, and there's also gonna be a screw under here. So we'll go ahead and just remove this guy, gently prying around the edges until we can get it to pop off. Let's see here. And the reason you wanna use the plastic is you don't want to break anything. So then you'll just pull the door handle up and out, and you can see here that it has these clips and this slides in here. So it goes in like that, and then this latches in behind this panel right here. So once you have these removed, what you'll notice is that there's going to be a couple of clips that are holding this door in down here at the bottom that you can't see yet. But first, we're gonna start by removing all of this hardware. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw, and this is a T20 Torx. So I'll go ahead, get this guy out and once you get it out a little bit you can really use a screwdriver version of this if you want it's not held in there very tightly so we'll get this guy out of the way and you can see it's just a screw put that to the side and the next thing is we're gonna have to start removing our little screws here. I believe that these are a seven millimeter. So I'll go ahead and remove these. This upper one is not on super tight. If you put it on too tight, the lock mechanism will not slide correctly. And if you're wondering at home why I'm wearing a mask while I'm working outside, the Omicron variant is going rampant and we try to protect our customers as much as possible. So there's another little nut in here that you'll want to get to this one's a little bit harder to get to so what i typically do is use an extension and my power tool and if you have a wobble socket that's perfect then we're using a seven millimeter go ahead get that out of the way Get this screw out of the way and put it in a safe place. And from there, I may have to remove this panel to try and get uh, some screws out underneath here. Have those bolts removed. You can go ahead and lift up on the door handle and pull it out. And you can see on this side here, if we can get the camera to come around, you can see that there are these hook latches here that sit inside the door and hold the door panel on. From this point, you can just let the door handle uh, hang a little bit, but it's actually best for you to support it on something so that you're not hanging this. So what I'll do sometimes is just support it on the door handle and peel this back for the moment. Because the next step is to remove this little foam pad here and then remove the bolts that are holding on the light assembly itself. Now the reason you wanna have the window down before you start this whole procedure is to make sure that you can reach through here without having to have somebody on the other side. So Kyle, a note for you, 
very first step that you need to show is making sure that the window is rolled down. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab my socket and start removing some of this hardware. I believe these are 10 millimeters. Yep. Sure are. All right. So now I'll take my 10 millimeter socket and I'll use my 10 millimeter socket to remove the nuts. You don't want to drop them because then it becomes a bear. So if you get nervous, do your best not to drop it. All right, now you might have to support the door a little bit. You don't want to add too much stress to the electrical connectings. You don't want to stretch any terminals. Once you get the last one out, you can go ahead, peel back this vapor barrier here gently and find where this gets connected. And it actually gets connected into the door panel right here. So if you wanna remove this, you can remove a 10 millimeter bolt over here, or a, uh, sorry, a seven millimeter screw right here. And then this whole assembly will pop out, remove this and the 10 millimeter, she'll come out. But you actually don't need to because you can actually just grab it and pull out the two connections right from here. And how this works is, there's a little tiny tab on this connector and a tab on this connector. You depress these tabs, you pull it out. Now, it's important that you take note of how the harness goes through. You can see here that someone's been in here before because these little plastic clips are actually supposed to tape this so that it doesn't get caught up in anything in the door. But now that we have all this done, what we'll do is we'll resupport our door frame and we will push through the mirror assembly and also depressing the plastic clips for the harness and we'll just wiggle it on through this is why the window's down so if you look here let me get this one harness through if you look here these plastic teeth are holding this piece in as a stop fail so sometimes there's four of them but this only has three you just pinch them together and push it through and the mirror assembly will come through Uh, can you show the inside of the door panel? Now coming to the inside of the door panel, you'll see that we have these little connectors here. And you'll want to go ahead and reuse them. So we'll just pull these off gently using our plastic pry tool. Right? Because we want to save these. So we don't want to be too violent. It doesn't help when it's cold. If it's too cold outside, you'll break these. So sometimes it's a good idea to... Uh, to use a little hair dryer or something to heat the plastic up to make it malleable. We'll just get these guys out. Eventually, seven years later. SpongeBob reference for you guys. All right, I'm gonna switch to a metal one. Careful of your step, buddy. All right, and what I'll do is I'll put the piece of plastic to protect the paint, and I'll go ahead and pry these guys up. All right, now we have our new light assembly here, and you just want to make sure that everything matches. You want to make sure that your old hardware is saved so that you can reinstall it and that it fits, which it does. And this is an aftermarket unit. And you can see it does not have that original plastic piece that was holding it in. So, um, so. so now what we're gonna do is start by fishing the wires through. The harnesses are too big to fish through at the same time, so you just do it individually. So it will reach through, put one piece through, one pigtail through, and then once you get one pigtail through, you get the other pigtail through. 
and then you'll pull this inside the cabin. Oh, I got it. As you can see here, we have a magic camera hand. Go ahead, get this guy through. And I'm gonna remove this top upper plastic piece here and get this guy sealed in like such. Once this is sealed in, I'll keep holding pressure. So we'll go ahead and put our last nut on. And then once we get those on, we'll take our little guy here and snug these up. And these only gotta be about 10 foot pounds, maybe even less. I'm just very gently snugging it. And you gotta remember that this is a plastic mirror, right? Going into uh, a metal nut. So if you over torque these, these studs will snap and break, right? You don't wanna over torque them. So once you have this done, remember those plastic clips that we had? These plastic clips, we're gonna tape here. So I'm gonna tape one of these here so that it all gets reinstalled correctly. So I have my thumb kind of where I want it to go. I'll go ahead and grab my electrical tape on the back side here and I'll just start taping it on. So I'll tape it a couple times to keep the harness where we want it. A couple little laps of tape and then I'll go to the other side, do the same thing, a couple little laps of tape. And then as you can see here, we can go ahead and press it back in so that it holds it nice and tight. Now we'll come to this guy and we'll do the same thing that we just did up here. So you'll find your hole, find where your hole's supposed to be. You wanna keep it in that track, put your hole up there, kind of do a loose measurement. And this is where we're gonna put it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on here like so, right? Cause that's where I want it to be. And then I'll grab my tape and I'll do the same thing that I did on the other side. Pull my tape up, take one more measurement, and that's where I want it to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tape it right into place. And you don't wanna have too much tension on this guy here because it will cause strain in the connector and that's not what you want. So go ahead, do my cross, get that out of the way. We'll tape it up and I'll cross again on the back side and then I'll pull it tight, snug it up and I'll just take my little connector here and shove it back in and you can see that we're nice in this hole. So now I'm going to have to go ahead and go backwards. Now you can see that these two connectors, right, are fairly similar. So you want to make sure that they go into the right hole, right? However, it's impossible to mess up because these dashes are in the same place, are in different places. So there's a there's a place that it goes and you can't mix them up, all right? So we're gonna go back under here. We're gonna take our plastic, we're gonna go underneath this vapor barrier and into the plastic, follow the other harness line. That's where you wanna be, all right? We'll pull this guy back up and we'll go ahead and find its home. So remember what I said, find the open hole in the harness connector, right? So one's gonna go here. And like I said, you don't need to force them in. All right, so the blue one is gonna be your forward one. And how they orient in is, can you see the connectors? How they orient in is that the 
the press that I'm depressing, this is gonna go in like this. So if you're doing it blind, just feel your finger for the hole, put the blue one in the front one, and it does not need to be forced. You'll heal click in. And then the black one is gonna go on the other side of this connector further back here. So I'll take the black one, find my hole. I'm gonna go underneath this connector here, right? And then find my hole and put that in. And remember what I said, it does not take any force to put that back in. We'll take our vapor barrier and if the vapor barrier glue is not adhesing, you wanna go ahead and try to re-stick it on there, right? So go ahead, we're gonna have to get some glue here and re-glue this because the vapor barrier is no longer sticky. So we're gonna have to get some glue to re-stick this vapor barrier. And then we'll go ahead and reposition the door. So I'm gonna have to come back here and glue this back together. Now to reinstall the door, you'll notice here at the bottom of the door, you have two latches. And these two hooks are gonna set you up for the future. So look down here, look down at these two pla plastic latches, that one latch there, and then there's another latch over. You go ahead, line your door panel back up, get everything kind of sorted, and then you'll just lift your door panel up, get it into its keepers, press it in, and gently tap it down. Once you have it gently tapped down, you can go ahead and start reinstalling your hardware. And you'll just need to make sure that that top piece is lined up. And you can just go ahead and start your reinstallation. So here's my little seven millimeter. I like to start everything by hand. And remember this upper one, you don't have to put on super tight. It just needs to be snug. So I'll just snug it up. All right, that's nice and snug. And next, what I'll do is I'll take this guy and I'll find its keeper, All right? So we'll get this guy in here. And remember, this is a T20 Torx, and I'm gonna screw it in by hand until it gets too challenging for me. And then I'll put it in with the quarter inch. And like I said, this is super light. All right, I'm just very gently putting it together. All right, now that's nice and snug. Now I'm gonna take my little tree, put this little tree on, press that in, and I have one more screw, which is gonna go up into this cubby hole. This is a tight little cubby hole. Now a trick for you guys, all right, this is also gonna be a tech, this is gonna be, just, Sorry about that. yep, just slide everything down, right? Cause we don't, need, we don't need any more of these tools. So you can just slide them all out of the way. Cool, and then slide those down too. All right, so a uh, little quick t uh, tip here, Kyle, you can use this as a short. If you're ever working with a small socket and a bolt, what you can do is you can just stick a little piece of electrical tape on it. This is probably more tape than you need and shove it into whatever size socket. That way it's not going to fall. So we'll go ahead and take this guy up here. And snug it up. And then when you're done, you can just go ahead and peel the tape right back off. So we'll go ahead and peel that tape off. Okay, so the next step is to reinstall this piece panel right here. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the orientation. It goes in this way. So this little piece, this piece goes into here. We're gonna go ahead and just slide this guy in, clip it in and then test to make sure that it's working. And we can also test 
and see that our mirror assembly is moving. And what we'll do from here is go ahead and install our door handle. So the door handle, you hold it like this, slip it in here, and then you're gonna want to open the door handle so you can get a little bit of uh, distance, peel that sucker so that that clip goes in there first, and then you can just very gently press it back into position. If your vehicle is lucky enough to have this little air dampener, you can see here that this just slides right over top of the cable and then goes in here and this acts as a sound deadener. This also acts as an insulator sound deadener. Slide it behind, clip it in and press. And then your door panel is back and secure. And at this point, just make sure that you've attached all your hardware. You can see here, we've got to put this little clip, press this guy on and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, some mirrors have their own special color, right, of this front piece here. So this piece is a plastic piece that's transferable. Let me grab the old mirror for you. So as you guys can see here, the factory came with a black and this is painted. And I'll show you how you remove it. It's actually pretty easy. You can use your little plastic tool here to get in underneath and pop this assembly out. And you can see that it has these latches which just press fit into here. So I'll go ahead and take this guy off. And now I'll come back up to the OEM one and I'll do the same thing. Sometimes it helps to have a little piece of plastic. And since this is from 2004, it's possible that it will break, but hopefully we're fortunate and it does not. So find a place that you can get your pry tool in there and get to work. I'll go ahead here. It's not ideal to use any sort of metal on plastic, but we don't really have a choice right now. So I'll find the part that's bowed out the most, wedge in there, then get my piece of plastic and try to pop it off as gently as possible without breaking the plastic. Okay, so now we'll look here and you'll see that we actually suffered some damage on these clips. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of adhesive on here and then press it right on to the mirror. So because this vehicle is so old, it's 2005, this piece of plastic is very brittle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and use a little bit of super glue here to go ahead and puncture and try to seal this guy on without too much slack. Now I'm just gonna do it on the edges here where these guys are broken. That way, if we ever need to, we can remove it in the future, but more than likely not, you're gonna be replacing the whole piece. And if you're lucky, you'll get a panel that works actually correctly. Now the mirror is not gonna be the side that breaks, it's gonna be this piece that breaks. So you can always glow these guys back on. So I'll go ahead and install it now. So to install, we'll just line it up with our existing holes and we'll just press it in. different. See this clip right here? I'm gonna have to cut this clip off. It's plastic so it should come right off. Twist that guy off. I'm gonna put a little bit more glue there. I'll stick it all back on together. Yeah, as you can tell, I really care about like employee experience. <laughs> I want everybody to enjoy and value their job. All right, so we'll put this guy back together. All right. All right. 
and this guy doesn't exactly fit. So what I'll do is glue that top piece on. and hold it so that she glues herself right on there.